Hey guys, just want to give you a heads up for tomorrow, January 30th, patch for NHL 20. It was released by Clappy on Twitter uh, today, so let's go over all of the changes you're going to see and kind of my thoughts on it. So we'll start with the gameplay. Fixed a rare case where the puck could stop dead when passed or shot around the boards. I didn't experience this too often, but obviously a good fix to make sure that that never happens because that would be a brutal turnover. Various interception logic tuning. I kind of hate these ones because they're so vague. I have no idea what they mean. Um, but it does look like this patch is kind of focused around intercepts that we're going to get into a little bit. Reduce, reduced player's ability for pickups outside skaters' field of view. One hand behind the back pickups. So they do not play as often and as unrealistically fast. So um, anytime that you skate by a puck and whatnot that you were able to just pick it up even though it was reaching way far back, um, this this could you know reduce that so it was more logical or more realistic um, defensive awareness attribute made more effective and the tuned window in which players can intercept pucks within their field of view so defensive awareness and offensive awareness guys if you don't know are how the player plays in the said zone so as well they also modify defensive and offensive stats we just can't see it um, offensive defensive awareness though however is you know, you ever notice how some guys just get wide open in the offensive zone? It could be that they're going up against someone with lesser defensive awareness and their offensive awareness is super high. They have a better chance of getting open, things like that. So defensive awareness attribute being more made more effective should, or should you know, translate into better you know coverage of those one-timers by your AI, uh, which is, in my opinion, a good, a good, you know, thing. And as well as they tune the window in which players can intercept pucks within their field of view. So um, you should see a reduced amount in those, you know, the player has his back to the play intercepting the puck. That should be tuned way down, which, again, could kind of lead to more one-timer goals or things like that, but you're really going to have to manually control your defenseman if you want to stop those for sure. Improved player head tracking of the puck. Not sure what that means. Players tuned to have less balance preparedness when pivoting or backskating with the puck. So again, this is um, more of an L2 nerf. Uh, I don't see it a lot anymore, but there are still people that abuse it, that you know hold onto it and skate around in the zone. Um, they're going to have less balance. So you're going to get bumped off the puck much easier, even though you already kind of do, when you're pivoting or backskating with the puck. Fix an issue where a holding pass would negate spins from working, which opened up holes in skating blends. So if you're holding pass and you try to do a spin, it would just kind of lock you in that animation. You'd be stuck with however your player was kind of positioned. That should take care of that, which is, again, a good thing. Fix an issue where slap shots in the defensive end would target your own net instead of the left stick direction. Huge improvement because I don't know if you play sixes, but any time a defensive wanted to go do a slap shot play down the boards um, for a breakout, it would just rifle off your own net, and it was like the iron nets where they would fly up and it would just give you a penalty, which uh, should be all fixed. Further improvements for to covers for pucks underneath the goaltender. This again is going to translate more to sixes, um, where you'll get you'll you won't get that where the puck is underneath the goaltender. The save isn't being made, and everyone can just kind of jam at the puck for forever. That should be uh, kind of that should be fixed. Fix an issue where goalie would continuously lose the puck when performing a between the legs cover. So same kind of thing. Um, you just it'll it'll actually cover the puck because he won't lose it continually. Fixed a few cases where the puck was able to slip past the goalie unintentionally while they were tight to the post. This um, is vague, and I have a feeling it could stop the what's known as the Gren Wrap, um, where uh, you kind of backskate and do a spin behind the net and take a slap shot on the goal line, and it would just squeak past barely off the pad and into the net. Um, it might also stop uh, the you know the passes that end up going in as well. Uh, so I'll be interested to see how this one plays out. And then increase the amount of stick contact on legs and skates needed to cause a trip. Now everyone's gonna lose their mind, but our ones aren't really um, at a overpowered state right now. You have to know what you're doing. Um, I know there's what's re what's referred to as the wiggle stick. It's something that Nuke does. Um, you'll see it a lot where people will hold out the R1 and then go back and forth slightly with the right thumb stick or right skill stick and then also tap L2. It kind of keeps you in position straight so you can wiggle it back and forth to knock the puck off the stick. Um, which again isn't abusing the game at all. It's just really, really, you know, good controller awareness. And 
Um, I did think that there was times where if you were even on the outside of someone's shins, they would take a dive. So we'll see if this brings back, um, I believe it was NHL 18, where it was just absolutely brutal, where you could spam R1 the entire game. I don't think it's going to be like that, but we'll have to see. Presentation added additional commentary. So uh, Sabalski and Ferraro live in Vancouver. So this is probably just more added stuff. If you did reply to Twitter about adding something to whether your name to the game and stuff, this would be where I'd watch and look for that. Added consensus, skip to play of the period. Replays, huge. No longer will you have to sit through those 30-second replays at the end of periods. World of Chell, turned off canal or door outdoor rink from ESHL, drop in 3v3 and 6v6. I believe it was a lighting issue. Uh, made It was a really rough game when you wanted to play uh, drop-ins. Fix an issue where top clubs and threes eliminators stop receiving points when you're the top of the leaderboards. Good fix. Don't know how many people it's going to impact. New content added to World of Chell, which is revealed through the Chell Challenge card. Tune in regularly to see what exciting stuff you can earn. So again, new stuff like the Snoop Dogg stuff, all that kind of stuff. So if you are a World of Chell player, all good things. Arts, uh, helmets, a true dynamic 9 pro helmet was added into the game. And then for Hut, fix an issue where users would sometimes crash playing against certain squad battle teams. I've seen this happen, and it sucks if it's the team of the week. It'll just, you know, log out or whatever. Um, so that's fantastic. Fix an issue where users would sometimes receive a negative skill rating for winning a Hut Rivals game. I never saw this happen to me personally, but obviously that's a good thing as well. And then jerseys were added, so the alternate Ducks alternate Bruins, the uh, Stadium Series Avalanche and Kings jerseys, which are ugly, by the way, and then the Winter Classic Dallas Stars and Nashville Predators, and then the alternates for the San Jose Barracuda. So overall, guys, not a bad patch. It didn't really add in anything or really tune a lot of stuff. It just looks like it fixed a lot of known issues. So we'll see how it plays out, guys, but let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the patch, and uh, yeah, let me know how it plays after uh, on the 30th.